Hello and welcome to Fairflies TV. Today we're talking about our new shanks and trailer wires. We've done some innovations here and I think you're going to like them. Stay tuned. Okay, first, let's talk about the shanks. We've done some innovation in these shanks. The first thing that we did is we beefed them up. We're tired of flimsy shanks in our vices. We like to tie on things that are just rock solid, and that's gonna be a lot easier to tie on. Also, that added weight is gonna get your fly into the zone without having to add so much. So we, we, we think that's gonna be a little bit better for you. We've put two eyes. For those of you that like to still fish with beads and cones, that ring eye is what you're gonna to wanna to use. The other end is a tapered return eye, similar to an Atlantic eye, but we've upsized it a little bit. We like a bigger eye, there's more movement in the water. That tapered return is gonna give a nicer finish on your head, and that is my preferred end right there. So we've made it 52 millimeter shanks so that you can choose. You can cut off one end or the other, you can make them long, you can make them short, whatever you wanna do. We've also added a textured paint on these shanks. That textured paint is going to help your thread stick. It's not going to be able to slide off of the back and you're going to find that it's not going to rotate around. Next thing we did is we've got specially engineered trailer wire. This is super fine. This is 19 strands of stainless and mono. And that trailer wire is not only going to keep your hook in the perfect position, it's not going to kink up for you. Our good friend Jay Nicholas was out fishing for tuna with him last week and he was straightening two watt hooks and still not getting a kink or a break in any of our wires. They're gonna hold up for you. We're gonna talk about how to rig these things in a little bit. But the other thing that we did is often when we tie in our loops, sometimes, for me at least, my loops get a little bit sideways. It's gonna make my hookup setups a lot more difficult. So what I like to do and what we've done for you to save you the time and the effort, just make everything easier, is we put bend in there and then we bent it up. Wherever that point is where your hook is gonna ride. So as we tie this in, you're gonna see that that sets you up for success at the far end of this. Also, that little bend is made to go up and over the shank. So that's gonna hold your hook in the right position for those perfect hook sets every time. It has the right amount of bend, but as you'll see, I can bend this and it's still gonna go right back to where we put it. You're really gonna like the way that these things work when they get in the water. Okay, let's talk about rigging these things. We like to call this our trailer rigs. I'm gonna cut the ring eye off first. Just gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna leave this a little bit longer. I like to leave it long. I can always shorten it after I tie everything up. Make sure that your eye is at 90 degrees. So just kind of make sure in your vise, however you set that up, that that's set. The reason I like to do it is I like that to spin on axis. Also, I wanna know that when my, my vise is flat and I tie in my wire, that my orientation is gonna be correct for my hook later on, okay? So, as always, let's attach our thread. I'm gonna start here by closing that return eye. I go backward, forward, and backward. That, I can pull that thread. And I'm gonna stand nice and tight here. I want that to have a good thread base. There we go. Now, this is, this is really an important step. A lot of people just start to jump in into tying their wire. I want everything rock solid. So what I like to do, this is our Wasatch Tools saltwater whip finisher. And I'm just gonna throw in a few whips right there. What that's gonna do is that's gonna hold in place where my thread is gonna start when I set up my trailing loop. Now, the main thing is is I've got a few choices to make right here. Either I want my hook up short, in this case I would have to have the hook already on here to tie any shorter than the length of the hook. But if I want to be able to switch that hook out for any other sized hook or for a fresh sharp hook, then I need to leave that as least as long as the bend to the eye of the hook. That way I can get them on and through there. So I like to fish size fours, pretty much memorize that size. 
comes right about to the middle of uh, this bead here on my vise. I'm going to do three wraps. One, two, three. Let it hang. Make sure it's hanging. A little bit of pressure on there. And what I can do is right here, pull it back and forth. And what that's going to do is make sure I don't have any crossed wires. I can reset my length. I can make sure that my point is pointing straight up, just like that. Once it's there, I'm going to pinch it, hold it in place, and I'm going to wrap to about three quarters my shape, my shank length there. And then I'm going to wrap back. And again, I, I just the more wraps I get in here, the better this is going to hold. Now, a lot of you really think that you need to go through the eye and double that back. You're clogging up the eye. It's completely unnecessary. You're not going to have those nice, clean finishes on the heads. So let me show you what you do need to do. And again, a lot of people will just tie them in straight like this, cut them off, and it holds. I don't like to take chances on that. What I like is a nice, even balance when I tie these in. So I'm about a quarter of an inch from where I stopped wrapping it, back to here. I'm going to grab these on either side. I'm going to pull them back. I'm going to hold them just like this. Then I'm going to wrap forward towards that bend, and it's just going to pinch. It's going to pinch everything down. And this is going to lock it in. And once I get that nice and tight, I'm going to wrap off the front, make sure I get some wraps back on the shank, and then I'm going to wrap back into this. It's just going to keep, again, everything from being able to turn or slip or anything on that shank. Now, I'm going to take those two tags that I have left. I'm going to cut them so that they're totally covered as I come back. Be careful as you go past the end of that wire. Often, it will cut your thread. So either manage your bobbin so that you're ready for that thread to break or kind of wrap off of it carefully, wrap in front of it, and then I kind of, I kind of do X's back and forth over that end just to make sure that that's not going to cut my thread later. I wrap all the way back to exactly the length I'm going to want in that. Now I'm going to come back in and right here I'm going to throw in another whip finish. Every material, if you throw in a whip, if anything breaks at any point, your fly is never coming apart. If a tooth on a big toothy fish starts shredding your fly, that fly's still going to be in the water. If your fly is not in the water, you're not going to catch a fish. So I say keep that thing on the water as long as you can. Next step, finish our trailer rig. All I have to do, we like to use UV glue. Makes everything quick. I'm not waiting on things to dry. I use the thinnest UV glue I can find. That way it soaks into the threads and it just sets up my foundation for the rest of my fly or my jig or whatever I'm tying that day. Make sure it's nice and even. I'm working it back and forth over the threads. I'm letting it set up. The next thing is a really powerful UV light. Um, I like these. These are, are used by dentists for setting the UV resins for uh, tooth work. Um, I found this thing and I love it. It beeps a little bit, but boy, it just sets it up. I have no residual residue with any of the UV glues. As some of them, you know, people have complained. It's because the flashlights that we, are, we have, had been buying uh, just didn't have the UV power to set them up correctly. And this is set to time for 20 seconds. I just go ahead and do it for the full 20 seconds. It turns itself off. And now, no residue whatsoever. Set up rock hard. I'm telling you, that's not going to be your fail point. After that, it's designed a beautiful fly. Well, if that was helpful for you, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. We have a lot more coming. We're going to be doing recipes on, on flies and jig patterns to do. And uh, we, think, we think we're going to make this easy for you. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.